All right, so it is 632, so we are going to get started. My name is Kylie Testa, and I'm the Community Outreach and Engagement Coordinator at the Connecticut River Academy at Goodwin University. We are so happy to see all of you here. Um, I know it's not perfect and you're not in our building, but we are going to do the best we can to kind of show some of our spaces off. Um, we appreciate you all showing up virtually because we also know that it's been a few months of virtualness. So thank you for doing this. Um, if you have any questions at all, please utilize the chat feature in Zoom. We will uh, answer them as we go. Um, so like I said, I am Kylie Testa and I'm the Community Outreach and Engagement Coordinator. Um, I have been here for, this is my 11th school year with uh, Connecticut River. And I gotta tell you, my favorite thing is that year in and year out, we get scholars with a number of different interests. It could be anime, it could be horror movies, it could be the latest fashion designs. And every year I learn something new from, from our scholars. So um, I'm actually going to pass it off now to JC Foster, our principal. Thank you, Kelly. Good evening, folks. I'm JT Foster, interim principal at CTRA. We are an early college 6th through 12th grade academy with a focus on advanced manufacturing and environmental science. I've been here since 2011. I started as an English teacher and then I was assistant principal. This year I'm interim principal. Hopefully next year I will be principal. I welcome you tonight from our great hall. We have a beautiful state-of-the-art building you'll learn more about later on. Um, well, right now, uh, let's see, my favorite thing about the school is obviously the scholars and the scholars' families and the scholars who become family. And you'll, you'll see some of our graduates speak tonight about that, but um, that's what keeps me here and what I love so much. Um, but let me introduce next Ms. Uh, Wendy, uh, Wendy Peterson, who's the assistant principal and she's in our project center. Hi, good evening. So I'm Wendy Peterson. I've been with um, Connecticut River Academy for three years. This is my first year as the interim assistant principal. Um, and the past two years, I was the supervisor for student services. Um, I am in our project center, um, which is where we come together um, when it's non-COVID time um, and scholars work collaboratively. And this year, many of our Goodwin classes are being held here. Um, what I love about this school is even before I started working here, I was previously an educator at Hartford and I used to tour my um, incoming scholars, the scholars who would be coming into um, a high school. And I used to bring them here quite frequently um, because of the feel. Um, and the feel comes from our scholars and our families. So very much enjoy being a part of this community. I'm turning this over now to Ms. Gavin. Good evening. Thank you all so much for coming. And so I'm so happy to see all of you. Um, I, my name is Wendy Gavin and I'm the early college theme coach, which means that um, I work with the scholars who are taking Goodman College classes. And I um, collaborate with the uh, university to, um, to arrange the classes and, and make sure our scholars are successful. Uh, I've been here since pretty much the beginning, 11 years. This is my 11th year. And um, I actually commute a long way to go there because I love it so much. Um, it's such a great environment. And I, I, don't, I, I, I don't really have anything else to say except for I, my favorite thing is the, is the scholars also. Uh, it's the relationships we build. Uh, the counselors were laughing at me yesterday because every time I say, oh, I worked with this scholar, I love him so much, or I love her so much. They're so, they're just so, so, such interesting people and they have so many strengths to bring to our school and, and our society in general. And I'm gonna pass it off to Mr. Dodona. Good evening, everybody. Um, I'm coming to you from our advanced manufacturing center, uh, a little bit up the road from where JT and Wendy are. Um, so I, I'm down in our beautiful new state-of-the-art facility. This is where all of our technology education courses happen and also our advanced manufacturing courses. Um, so I've been in education for 11 years now. I've been with CTRA for a year, but um, my, my connection to CTRA goes back to the beginning as well. And I've been around um, this place for, for, for about its uh, inception as well. 
Um, so I'm excited to be here with you all tonight. Um, I think one of my favorite things about being here is seeing seeing the uh, what I call the aha moment in our scholars. Um, when I work with a student and I see them pick up something or, or grasp something that they didn't think was possible and then where that and then the possibilities that they can take that from there that's what that's what kind of gives me a charge so that's what keeps me going and it's been a been a great time working here so we'll hear more about it in a little bit thank you thanks everyone so we will begin our presentation i will share my screen So hopefully you're all in the right place. This is Connecticut River Academy's virtual info session. Thank you, Kelly. I'll take it from here. So a look at our three, th three themes. Our state-of-the-art building is located perfectly for our three themes. Um, we are early college and we are at the entrance to the Goodwin College campus. Scholars come here and take our trolley to our other two buildings because uh, CTRA is actually one school and three buildings, but it, they also take the, uh, the trolley to the CTRA, um, uh, to the Goodwin College uh, main buildings and other buildings for college classes. If you go out the west door at the end of the Great Hall, you go to about 700 feet, you'll hit the Connecticut River. We have there a dock and a research vessel where scholars explore the Connecticut River for our environmental theme. If you go out the east side of our building, you go one block, you'll hit Pratt & Whitney. So we're a stone's throw from Pratt & Whitney for our advanced manufacturing center. So we're perfectly located for our three themes. Um, but next, what I'd like to do is I said, there's some graduates who have a message for you. So as I introduce the early college theme and Ms. Gavin again, I want you to hear a little message from our, our graduates, our recent graduates. What's up everyone? My name is Cesar Valentin. I graduated from CTRA in 2016. Um, I just graduated from the University of Connecticut. I uh, had a double major in political science and philosophy with a minor in human rights. Now I am in grad school. Um, I'm also the social justice intern with the Connecticut Office of the Arts. And the reason why I would say CTRA is somewhere you should consider going and looking to apply yourself is because it's a place where you can make yourself be what you want to be, right? I'm not going to sit here and say that all of your opportunities are laid out on the plate, but the opportunities are there and they're available if you want to put in the work, right? These people are going to want to meet you where you're at and they're going to want to help to bring you to the next level where you could be. But that's all the effort that you put in as well. It's a place that's going to match what you're bringing. And if you're bringing everything that you've got, they're going to give you everything that they've got to you. And that's why I've been able to get to the places that I have and, you know, able to graduate university, get into grad school with scholarships and all that kind of stuff. Hi, everyone. My name is Victoria Carpenter, and I'm originally from Manchester, Connecticut. I graduated from CTRA in 2019 and went on to complete my freshman year of college at Marion Military Institute in Marion, Alabama. Now I transferred to Massachusetts Maritime Academy and majoring in marine science, safety, and environmental protection. So originally, I went to CTRA for the STEM-based curriculum, which is super hands-on and interactive, and I still remember most of what I learned in my science classes today. But more than that, I also was able to gain over a year of college credits, which has lessened my workload so much now that I'm actually in college, and I'm even able to minor in Homeland Security. But more importantly, the family aspect and the diversity is definitely the best part of CTRA. I'm graduated from CTRA, you know, almost two years ago now, and I still keep in touch with most of my high school friends and even some of my teachers. And just the minute you walk in the door, you feel welcome, you know, everyone's from a different background, but there's really like no clicks, you know, no drama, everyone's really just there and you get to know everybody and it really does feel like a family. Hi guys, my name is Tina McKenzie and I am a CTRA alumni. I I'm so excited to talk to you guys about CTRA because I felt like it was an integral part of my system. Um, I went to CTRA and I did the Bridge of Success program, which is an after school program for children. And it just goes over different methods of success that you can take and college readiness, which they have the early college readiness program that students can take college courses at. Um, good on college. 
I did both of those programs and then I applied for school at South Virginia University. And a lot of those credits that um, I took at Goodwin were able to transfer over for my nursing program. And now I am a registered nurse. So, Miss Gavin, would you like to start to talk about our early college? Sure, sure. yeah, sorry. Um, I, I was just, uh, it's so, it's so, uh, it feels so good to see our scholars and see how successful they are. So, sorry, I was just taking a minute. Um, so, I'm going to talk to you um, about the benefits of our uh, early college pr program. I'm going to explain what it is and, and the benefits. Um, I think what sets our program apart is that is our collaboration with Goodwin University. Um, we're, we're right on the campus and um, we have the connection to the campus setting. Our students uh, are going over to the college and they're being taught by college professors. Um, I want to talk to you because we get a lot of questions about our program and how it compares to the program offer for the UConn credit courses. Um, and I think that I've been a part of high schools that have both of those programs. And I would say, I would tell you that the early college program where our students are actually creating a, a college transcript um, and um, they're not having to take a test at the end of the course to earn their credit. They are earning their credit outright. And that, that to me is, a, is um, a lot more equitable because they do all the work, uh, they get their credits, they transfer. And I think that I see a lot more success with our early college program than I did sometimes with the AP or the ECE because they had requirements in order to earn the credit in terms of like on that one day, you're taking a test. And if you don't do well on that test, you're not earning the credit, even though you spent the whole year in the course. So I uh, am a big fan of our program for that reason. I also think something um, that I see that's really different about what we do is that we uh, really personalize our support, meaning we, get to know our scholars really well. We understand what they need. We support them academically. We support them socially, emotionally, and we help them be successful at all costs. We're, we're just really dedicated to them. Um, and we also, um, Victoria kind of spoke about how she's still in contact with, with educators. Uh, we, we continue that support after our scholars graduate. We, they reach out to us when they need help with anything in college. We, we continue that relationship. Um, this weekend, I have a meeting with a student who graduated last year who wants me to, to look at her history paper at, at UConn her, and ask, you know, help her with that a little bit. She wants to bounce some ideas off me. Um, another student that graduated a couple years ago contacted me because she wanted to talk to me about some financial aid that she's trying to figure out in college. So I think that um, those uh, supports and the relationships we build help students be successful. Um, I think the outcome, you know, you heard some of our students tell you what those outcomes are. They, they go to college as sophomores for the most part. And there's a couple of good things about that. First of all, they can graduate in three years. But if they have, like, we have uh, one student, I don't know if he's in the video, but he, he's uh, in med school now. And he was telling me that the biggest benefit to him was that he could, he still took four years to get through his undergrad, but he could take less classes and, so that he could really focus on doing well. So either way, um, you either can graduate early or, or you could take your time with a really difficult program. Um, the, the program allows us to have a strong, uh, work with our scholars to really help them have a strong post-secondary plan. And um, they're, 
the, what they tell us, the feedback we get from our scholars is that their transition to four-year college or university it, is really smooth. They notice a huge difference in their ability to be successful compared to other freshmen because really they're not freshmen. And, and so they, they notice that even though it's their first year away from home or on, on a college campus away from high school, they notice that they know what's going on. They know how to advocate. They know how to meet with professors. They know how to organize their time. And that makes a huge difference in their success. Hi everyone, my name is Megan and I'm a 2018 CTRI graduate. I currently work at Apple as a technology and merchandising pro where I use so many, if not all the skills that I learned at CTRA um, every day at my job now. So I really recommend families to choose CTRA because they offer so many different opportunities for every single student. Um, and you can really tailor it to your preference almost. So whether you're interested in going to college early and getting a head start on that, that's an option. Whether you're interested in CDC machining training, that's an option. If you're interested in technology, another one for you. Um, so even just being in a welcoming and diverse environment, like there are so many different options and opportunities for a student. And teachers will take an interest in what you're interested in and they'll help you succeed in those interests. So give CTRA a try and I hope you guys enjoy it. Hi, my name is Elio Andrades. I'm from Hartford, Connecticut and I graduated CTRA in 2014. Six years later, I'm a certified licensed HVAC technician, um, loving my job, and CTRA really helped me out in figuring out what I wanted to do with my life. Um, I had no idea uh, my senior year in high school, um, I was kind of scrambling to see what I wanted to do, and they said it was okay to be undecided at the moment. You go to college and figure it out. Um, but I figured out as I was leaving that I learned hands-on the best. Um, that was one of my strengths and I have CTRA to thank for that because I love my job. Um, they help in a way that no other school would and I really recommend you go there. Thank you. Julian Manning, class of 2016. I'm a senior right now at Elms College. I think families choose CTRA because this is very family oriented. When I was there, you know, I got help from literally everybody in the school. Um, they also say like it takes like a village to raise a kid. And, you know, I think that definitely played a part in my success there. Hi, my name is Ashley Bracken. I'm from Windsor Locks. I graduated from CTRA in 2013. After CTRA, I went to UConn and graduated with a psych degree in 2017. Now I'm actually in the financial field and I just bought my first home. Um, without CTRA, I would not have gotten as far as I did because they definitely pushed me um, the other school I was in, I was getting into a lot of trouble, and I love how diverse CTRA is. If you want to go further in life, this is definitely the school for you. They will push you, and they will still remain in your life even after you graduate. Hi, everyone. My name is Ma so, Mr. Dodona. All right. Well, thank you. Um, so it gives me great pleasure. And I mean, just a, as a quick aside, um, I, I had a student that came and met me here just tonight. He was picking up a project um, from his capstone that he started working on last year in his senior year. And he's now at uh, Rensselaer Institute of Technology, um, he's continuing his engineering studies. So it was great being able to see him, connect with him, hear about how his classes are going, um, and just how I, I, I feel great. I feel honored that I had the chance to work with him and, and can't wait to see where, where he's going to be set, um, you know, stepping off to from here. So just to kind of orient um, where, where we are. So if you've driven down Route 2, um, you've seen all of our buildings. Um, this kind of dark gray line is Route 2. And then you can see where CTRA um, 9 through 12 is located. You go a little bit up Riverside Drive. This is where our middle grades program is, the six through eight. If you're familiar with Riverside Magnet, that's just on the other side of Route 2. And then here I am down at the Early College Advanced Manufacturing Center. So this opened up back, actually back in February. Um, so we haven't been in it for very long, but we're here and we're loving it. Um, and so we have our Advanced Manufacturing Center right? But we also have advanced manufacturing themes that run throughout the school. 
And so I took a couple of examples here and you can see the uh, cycle on the left is our design process thinking. So for some of you that are, have been exposed to the engineering design process, this process may look familiar to you, but it's something that we infuse into all of our classes, whether it's in an English class, I also have the math one that's that's put up here. And so we bring in concepts of advanced manufacturing into our other classes. And that's done through the design process, through utilizing some of the technology that we have available to us. But it's not just one or two or six classes that you can take. It's really a theme that's that's built in throughout the school. All right, and so I kind of wanted to, there's a lot going on on this slide, um, but this is a really good overview for you of what the opportunity is that is presented to you. So scholars, when they come and join us in their ninth grade year, all of our scholars take what's called our Foundations of Technology course. It's an introductory course. It's gonna expose them to um, advanced manufacturing technology and concepts. And then from there in their sophomore year, our scholars can continue in what's called our eCamp program, all right? And our eCamp program, much like some of the early college classes that Ms. Gavin mentioned, is our early college advanced manufacturing pathway. So starting out in your first year, this top row here, as a sophomore, you're taking college level courses. Those college level courses are taught by one of our CTRA instructors, who's also an adjunct professor at Goodwin University. And so we have the supports in there to, to help you learn that content, but also doing it in a way that's gonna be meaningful for you and it makes sense. And we don't just kind of throw you into a, a college course and say, all right, good luck. We have what's called our, our college study course or our tech study course, where we're working with you to support you to help you grow into this uh, program and to make sure that you're gonna be successful in it. And so you can see that all the various courses that are here, and this is aligned with Goodwin University's 37 credit certificate, this is a mouthful, so bear with me. Um, Goodwin University's 37 credit certification in CNC machining, metrology, and manufacturing technology. So that's an industry recognized credential that prepares you to go and, and start a career as a CNC machinist or programmer all at no cost to you getting all of those credits and then starting out as a, as a wonderful career. Um, and there's so many opportunities in that, in that field right now. So this just kind of gives you an, a, a preview of the, of the courses that are in our pathway. So just to uh, touch a little bit more on our foundations of technology course, this just gives you an example of some of the different projects that our scholars work on. Um, and this really gives them that the hands-on ability to, to get in there to start to see that engineering design process and start to learn what are some of the manufacturing technologies that we're seeing today. And then our scholars new this year also have the opportunity to take a computer science and robotics principles course. Um, if you pay attention to anything that's happening in the world and in industry, pretty much anything now is going to have some aspect of computer science in it. And you can see I've got some of the robotics pieces right behind me here. Um, but we wanted to be able to include computer science because that benefits not only our advanced manufacturing students, but then it, uh, computer science is touching so many different careers now. Everything from insurance to finance to uh, the service industry, computer science is a part of every single one of those. And so our scholars have the opportunity to learn those principles as well. Um, so I just wanted to highlight one of our, one of our early college classes um, where students earn the three credits. And that course is our CNC machining course. As I mentioned, that one is a dual enrollment. So you're getting high school credit as well as university credit. And with that too, you're learning how to use a Haas CNC machine. And for those of you that don't know what CNC is, CNC stands for Computer Numeric Control. And any, any highly precision part that's used in aerospace, uh, the medical industry, any of these parts are made on a CNC machine. And our students have the ability to learn that technical piece, but then also how to be successful in that career. And so you get to learn not only in a virtual environment, but then apply that knowledge in a hands-on environment as well. Um, this is our early, this is the outside of uh, the building that I'm, I'm sitting in right now. 
And then I've got just a, a brief video here. This just shows um, the different parts of the building and really it was a better way to kind of scroll through instead of just a picture. And so I'll kind of narrate this. So this is our CAD lab. And as you can see in here, we've got various 3D printers, laser printers and engravers, and then all the up-to-date computer design software. All right. I also mentioned that computer science and robotics program. This is that lab where all of those pieces happen. All right, and then this is where this is where I have the most amount of fun. This is our compute our CNC area, and you can see that's where we're making those precision parts on on our equipment there. And then finally, the last part is actually where I'm sitting right now in the in the robotics and um, automation center. So we bring together a lot of different pieces um, and gives our students exposure to a lot of different technologies. And we're trying to prepare them for the, for the careers and, um, that exist now, but also looking forward. And, and we're looking forward to careers in seeing those in robotics um, and programming, plastics and composites. So that just kind of highlights some of those pieces. Um, Ms. Tessa, we can actually kind of um, just kind of click through some of these, but the video really does a nice job of highlighting all those different pieces. I just wanted to include these, um, you know, so that our, our, our viewers here have the opportunity to see that, see that space as well. So I, I, I'm excited about this. I'm incredibly passionate about our programs here. Um, and I, I really do hope that, that you'll all have the opportunity to come join us in the fall. Um, and I did just put up here some of the different uh, careers that are associated with advanced manufacturing and then some of the different um, employment industries that um, hire our, some of our graduates. So thank you all. So now that you just uh, experienced some of our themes, um, we do really wanna talk about the freshman year and what it could look like for you as a scholar here and your family as, as one of our families. Um, we do something different that um, I think stands out to our staff and, and our scholars is we do um, a summer orientation program for our ninth graders and any new students. So if you're an incoming 10th grader too, you would be invited to this orientation. It is a week long orientation with just new students. Um, you get to meet uh, about 10 to 12 staff members and um, we do uh, all different things and work with different organizations to kind of orient you with Connecticut River Academy, but all of the other community things we do. So um, there's a lot of team building, there's a lot of um, kind of getting to know you, but also getting to know our educators. So it's really important for us, for you in a transition year into a transition school that you feel comfortable here and that you start to build those relationships that like we said, last pretty much a lifetime. Um, Although that we do have this for our, our, our incoming students, we also do family meet and greets. Um, it's really important to us that we get to meet your siblings and your parents and your grandparents um, because you're a part of the entire CTRA family. Um, so, so that is something different that we spend our summer kind of hanging out and getting to know you guys before you even start a first day of school with us. Um, we even do a freshman first day orientation where we don't have the the other kids come back. We don't have the juniors and seniors here on your first day. We um, do a special programming for you guys. So you get to see your schedule. You get to play with the lockers. You get to walk around this building because it can be intimidating, but it really isn't after the time you've spent the summer with us. Um, so that does kind of stand us stand us apart from, from other magnet schools. Um, Ms. Gavin, do you wanna talk about some of the classes? Yeah, I, I also really want to, as freshmen, I think, our, we live our magnet standards that you can see at the top here, awareness, diversity, action. And um, as a freshman, that's what we're trying to orient you to. We're trying to help you be aware of who you are and the world around you, um, appreciate diversity and respect diversity, and then take, um, we spend a lot of time helping you discover and realizing your strengths and your gifts so that you can go out into the world and, and, and make it a better place. And so that, that's the action piece of it. So in that freshman year, we, we I, I wanna say we work hard, but we, it's, it's not really work. We, we love what we do. We wanna get to know you and we want you to get to know you. 
we want you to understand your strengths and your gifts. So we start off, we, we do have uh, Mr. Dodona mentioned the Foundations of Technology class, and that sort of orients you to our manufacturing program. And, uh, you know, you can decide if you have an interest or you don't have an interest, but it still really gives you some skills that you can use with, with anything. We also have an identity, culture, and community class where um, the school counselors visit, uh, teach lessons. It's, it's in the social studies department. We're really trying to help you know who you are, understand yourself, like work on developing your strengths and, and knowing who you are so that you can decide what you want to do, what interests you have, what do you want to pursue in high school to build who you are. Um, and the other thing that's really important, you know, is, is the technology skills, the computer skills, because you're going to be using that computer for all your work, especially now, obviously. And so we want to make sure that you, um, you know how to organize your classes and use all the technology so that you can be really efficient and successful. Hello, everybody. My name is Daniel Martinez. I graduated from the Connecticut River Academy in 2014. Wow, 2014. It's weird to say that. I am um, born and raised here in East Harbor, Connecticut, and I currently work at Heart Radio in their promotions department. And there are many reasons why I would recommend people going to CTRA. And one thing is because the teachers just, just care about their students. Uh, back in when I was a teenager, little high school student, knucklehead, Education wasn't my top priority, and the professors there really made sure that they instilled in me the importance of an education. So all the faculty and staff at CTRA hearing this message right now, I want to thank you all for being um, really a support system that I needed, and I want to say thank you. I appreciate it. You're the reason why I you know, graduated high school, graduated college, have a good job. Uh, you guys were all part of that process. So thank you so much, and CTRA, you always have my stamp of approval. My name is Cecilia Vidaure, and I'm CTRA's class of 2016. I'm also a recent UConn grad. I'm currently working at an immigration law firm during my gap years before law school. I recommend CTRA for anyone and everyone. CTRA was extremely good to me. The guidance counselors are devoted to their students. The teachers there see the potential in their kids, and they push them to do their best at all times. It's also really beneficial to be able to take college classes for college credit during junior and senior year of high school. I recommend CTRA to anyone, like I said, so make the right choice and go to CTRA. Hello, hello, hello. How goes it? My name is Sadeja Blake, and I am a CTRA 2016 alum. Um, so I am pretty old in comparison to all of you watching this video right now. I'm from Hartford, Connecticut, and um, after I went to CTRA, I went to UConn for women's gender and sexuality studies. And then I started working at the local arts council. And I'm also training to become a doula. And if you guys don't know what a doula is, a doula is a caretaker. I'm a person that helps women and other people that can have babies. Um, I help them you know, get through their pregnancies or help them make really tough decisions about their lives. So that's what I'm doing right now. Um, I would 100% recommend any high school student that's looking to make a bunch of friends and open their minds up and just expand their network to go to CTRA because it was an amazing experience. And I think about who I was then and who I am now, and it's all due to CTRA. And I was actually able to graduate college in three years, and that was definitely due to them, due to them as well. So if you're looking at CTRA, you should most definitely take advantage of their early college program. I promise you, you won't regret it. Um, good luck, and thanks for listening. Hello, everybody. My name is Daniel. Okay, so um, again, Wendy Peterson, um, interim assistant principal, and I'm going to talk with you about the scholar support systems that we have. 
Um, previously, I was the um, student services supervisor, um, so which means I was overseeing special education and 504 planning. Um, I have over 20 years experience as a special education um, educator myself. Um, so I bring that background and that lens to working at the school with our scholars. Um, we offer a lot of supports. So we have special education services. We have five case managers. Um, so that means we have five special, edu special education teachers, one for each grade level, and then a um, special education teacher who teaches our life skills um, course, which is uh, amazing. Within our special education department, we also have um, our clinical team, which is comprised of two social workers and our school psychologist. Um, in addition to those services, we also have our school-based health center, um, which is amazing and not all schools have this. So um, we have in-house um, an APRN, um, we have a dental program, and we do have social work services through the school-based um, programming, which means you don't have to ha uh, qualify um, for special education or 504 to be able to get um, counseling services right here on our campus. Lots of opportunities. We also have um, an EL program for our English language learners. Um, so we have a coordinator who works here and over at our um, sister elementary school. Um, so we really do provide so much for our different, um, different needs and uh, various scholars. Um, as I had stated previous, if you're a little bit late, um, I've been here for three years and what drew me to CTRA was, was my years previous as a special education teacher. And when my scholars were looking for high schools, we would tour and I would bring them here all the time because the minute you walk in the door, it feels like a family. Our scholars are taken care of. Um, the networks that we have created with districts um, and our district reps who help us with our scholars who have um, IEPs or 504s, um, they are constantly um, recommending their scholars to come here as well. Um, we have a ninth grade school counselor um, dedicated just to our ninth graders. Um, we have very small advisory groups. Um, and what an advisory group is, is each scholar will have a connection with a um, educator who is, may not even be somebody that they have for classes. And that educator will follow them through the four years that they're here. So within our big CTRA family becomes another small microcosm of a family. Um, and then just small class sizes. So um, even during our regular school year, it is very common to walk into a classroom and see 12 scholars um, being taught, um, which is just amazing. If you've been to other schools, that's almost unheard of. So we have so many uh, supports and ways that we um, you know, guide our scholars as, you, as you're hearing from the messages that they provide. Thank you for your time. So our values define us here at CTRA, awareness, diversity, and action are our magnet standards and our core values. And you see them with everything we do. So in most schools, um, you have clubs and activities that happen after school. They are part of our school day. We have an extended school day at the end of each day, uh, Monday, uh, Tuesday through uh, Thursday, and it's called Flex. And at that time, you see people involved in all kinds of um, activities, um, whether it be uh, your, your typical ones like National Honor Society, um, Envirothon, uh, but we also have things that go with um, Hip Hop Movement Club. Um, you can see we take a lot of tours. Um, we have a singing, uh, singing group, a choir. Um, there's just a, a wide variety of clubs you can be involved in that will help you get leadership experience and build your resume and take action out in the community and the world around us. Um, just test the next thing. Girl cut. So what's unique about us is, like I said, you have, we have magnet themes and we have each month a magnet theme day where you celebrate a different aspect of our culture. Like girl cut happens in March and it's celebrating women um, and the power they have and they, that they've gained, especially now um, in this century. So uh, that's what you see on the left, but on the right, you see our open mic. Those are the rocks which are right behind me. And we have open mic once a month and um, people get up and read poetry or sing. Um, it's one of those things that just gets the whole school together and excited. And each one of these things is there to help you become a leader and build your resume because it's not just enough to take college classes. What colleges wanna see also is that you've been a leader somewhere and that you can take on an activity and see it through to the end. 
Um, we do have ath athletics and intramurals. We have volleyball and basketball. Um, there's crew that's offered not through us, but um, we have a partnership. So there's a lot to do and explore here. And uh, we're always open to new ideas. If there's something you have at your other school that you would like to see here, um, that's what Flex is about. It's student-led um, sessions. Ms. Test, I'll let you take that. Yeah, so the RESCO um, application opened up yesterday um, and our all of our applications are due February 28th. Um, so it is um, a while from now, but we do, um, would, we would love to help you out in making the right decision. Um, and if you are choosing us, please choose us as first choice. Um, if you would like to see more about our school, uh, please feel free to contact me. I would be happy to get you into a Google Classroom. Um, I know that you guys can't come into our building right now, which is unfortunate, but we would be happy to accommodate you sitting into one of our virtual classes. Um, if you'd like to talk to any students that are currently here, we can hook you up with that and have you guys have a conversation with them. Um, anything really to make your lives easier. We know that it is the middle of a pandemic. We know that life is pretty hard right now. Um, and we don't want your high school choice to be any more difficult than us putting it really in your lap. Um, you can contact me for any questions, uh, anything that we can do to support you, we are here. Um, at this point, are there any questions? Because I will stop sharing my screen. Ms. Tester, there were a couple in the chat. Great. Do you mind reading those to me, Ms.? Of course. So the first one is, how large are your class sizes, number of students, and how many per grade? Um, I, I can answer that if you want, Ms. Testa, because um, I'm also um, working in the school counseling department doing scheduling. So um, our, the maximum that the class would be would be 21. That rarely happens um, because we are a small school. And so um, normally I would say it ranges between 16 and 20. Our, um, our science classes um, get capped at 16. So it's very small classes. Um, the next question is, will the new CTRA middle school create significantly less openings for incoming ninth graders? Um, Mr. Foster, you want me to answer that? I got it. Um, that will be in two years. So right now the new middle school has a sixth grade. Next year it will be seventh grade. Two years from now will be eighth grade. So in, in two years, yes, we will have fewer seats available, but we still will have about 70 seats available. But that does not affect this year's application. And the next question is, are there still invent, uh, environmental science classes and animals to work with? Yes, thank you so much. So um, we have our habitat center and because we have been in and out remote, we have moved the animals to a nearby farm, but we still have our science center. We have the research vessel. Um, we have a pathway through the environmental science um, here. Uh, we have nine laboratories. So yes, uh, there are still the Envirothon and environmental classes. We have a green roof and a greenhouse. Another question just came up. My daughter went to Two Rivers and then she decided to go to a public school. Do you think she will still have possibilities to go to this school? So we do take very limited number of 10th graders, but the key is to apply. Uh, if, if it's 10th grade, we don't take 11th and 12th usually, but 10th grade, we take a limited number of 10th graders, yes. Um, next one, are you planning on keeping the same schedule next year? I think you have Wednesdays off now. No, so we did this for the hybrid model. Wednesdays off is a deep cleaning of the building. So with the hybrid model, we have scholars in, in the building. Uh, last name's A through M, Monday and Tuesday. Thursday, Friday is the rest of the alphabet. When we come back next year, providing that the pandemic has ceased to rule our lives, um, it will be a, a Monday through Friday schedule with a half day on Friday. Um, if it's a five day work week, Friday's a half day, scholars get early release and teachers have professional development. Okay, next question. How many openings will there be there be in the coming year for ninth graders? Um, about 130. There, there was another question that said, do you have any aerospace engineering classes? So I, if uh, Mr. Dodon is here, I, I would like him to speak to that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so we, we don't have specific aerospace engineering courses, 
we do have an engineering course that's in our science department. And then also our advanced manufacturing courses um, have that, that engineering concept in them. And then as I mentioned too, we have an engineering, um, that engineering design process is in incorporated into a lot of our classes there. And as I just mentioned, the scholar that I met tonight, he's continuing his, his education at Rensselaer Institute of Technology, which is one of the premier engineering schools. And so, you know, do we have a specific aerospace engineering course? No, but is it my, my feeling that understanding how things are made makes our students better engineers? Absolutely. Okay, I'm loving I, it. Oh, go ahead and wait. Sorry, I, I just wanted to um, add to Mr. Dodona's um, because I just thought of this um, when he talked about our student going to RIT. Um, colleges love CTRA. The four-year colleges love CTRA. It's just a fact because I've been at other high schools and I think they love, um, they love that, that our scholars have proven that they can be successful on a college campus. I think that gives them confidence that our students are gonna be successful. But I think they also really um, appreciate the diversity and they appreciate the strengths that come out of, um, that come out of what they're doing at CTRA. So we had three of our scholars last year get, um, go to RIT. And um, that in any other school that would not have happened that I've been in anyway. So that's just an example of what we offer. Um, we had um, Tufts University call us and say, we want more of your students. Um, we, we're, really, uh, we're really looking to um, kind of, we want students from different diverse places. So I think that's a big selling point for us too, in terms of the engineering. Thank you, Ms. Gavin. Um, what is the apprenticeship? I think that one is for you, Mr. Dodona. Yeah, absolutely. I was going to jump in on that. So it, I, you must have had a keen eye because on that on that slide where I outline all the 37 credit program, there is there is a bullet point on there for the apprenticeship. So kudos to you, Derek. Um, you, you definitely get the gold star of the evening. <laughs> um, so the apprenticeship program, what it's what it's supposed to look like in a non-pandemic year is, is that our scholars in their second semester of their senior year would have the opportunity to go and work at a in a manufacturing or engineering firm performing all those things that they've they've learned how to do and really see if if a career in manufacturing or engineering is for them and so it's an opportunity where they're still in still in high school they're still getting that dual enrollment as a high school and college credit but they're actually out in the field, you know, for, for a half a day or a day a week, learning and truly seeing what that, what that industry is like. Okay, Ms. Tester or Mr. Foster, if you apply earlier, do you get a better chance to get accepted? So unfortunately not, we have no control over the application process. It is done through the school choice system and it's a blind lottery. So that happens um, in the spring. Um, but what I will say is this, in order to get in here, you have to put us as your first choice. We never get to the point where we take in someone who has put us as a second choice. We have uh, so many candidates applying to us. We must be listed as your first choice. But after that, it is the blind lottery. We have no in in input into it. Any other questions? How many openings are there? So for freshmen, it's about 130. Um, and then we usually take a handful of 10th graders. Um, next question, what percent of scholar, what percent got scholars Purdue the different tracks? I'm not quite sure what they're asking there. What, what percentage of scholars take the different tracks? I can tell you this, um, last year, 82% of our scholars graduated with some college credit, about 42% uh, graduated with a year of college under their belt. Um, with advanced manufacturing, um, Mr. Dodona, you probably can speak to that. We had, th them, no one's gone through the full program yet because it's, it's new. Correct, it's, it's, yeah, it's, so we've, yeah. we've got about 86 scholars in, in the program now. Um, we're looking, and Ms. Gavin, you can verify this number, but I think we're looking at about 16 that are going to graduate this year as seniors. 
Yep, that's right. You're correct about that. These are all great questions. Thank you. If you have any more questions, you can always reach out to us. Um, we are we are remote right now, but uh, we are here Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday. You can call, you can email us. Ms. Testa will put up the information about how to contact us. We will be having another virtual recruitment session um, on Wednesday, I believe it's January 13th it is. Correct. Um, so if you want to come back or if you want to go on the website and apply now, you can. Just a reminder, you must put, put us down as your first choice. We never make it to second choices. Any more questions? Thank you so much for joining us tonight. We greatly appreciate it. Question is how many apply? Good question. I don't have that data. I'm sorry. Um, uh, I don't, if David was on here, he might be able to tell us, but I don't. I think he he's, he's left already. I'm sorry. It, it varies. Uh, it's a little bit over a thousand. Okay. I also would like to add if you have any um, questions about the early college program or you have any questions about, you know, you're wondering if this is the right place and, and you want to have an individual conversation about who your son or daughter is or, or um, you know, asking if you think it's the right fit, Ms. Testa and, or myself um, or Ms. Testa will point you to the right person for sure. But please feel free to contact us individually because we, we will, you know, be genuine and honest with you about you know, what we have to offer. We want it to be the right fit. We want you to be happy. Um, CTRA truly is a special place. And um, if you want to come to a special place, then CTRA is for you. All right, that's our presentation. Ms. Tessa, do you wanna put up the contact information? I just added my email to the chat. So if anyone would like to email me, I also emailed you through our CTRA info at CT River Academy. So feel free to reach out to either. And thank you again for coming. Thank you everyone. Thank you. All right, guys, I'm going to end this meeting. Thank you, guys. Thank you, everyone, for coming out tonight. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Nice job, everybody. Great job. Thank you, guys.